Hey, this is Thinker Thunker. Why, with hundreds of millions of us walking around with cameras 24-7, why can we not film some footage at least on par with the Patterson Gimlin film? That's a fair question. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> Again, why, after almost 50 years of being filmed, why is the Patterson Gimlin film still the best example we have? Now, the quick answer to that is, for most of us, a Bigfoot would have to walk through our living room before we could even have a chance at it. And even then, most of us are gonna blow that shot. And the reason is, just because you've got a camera doesn't mean you know how to use it. And to prove that, time yourself. See how long it takes you to get your camera out, get it zoomed in on something moving away from you, then make sure it's focused, make sure the auto exposure is working and all that, then hit record and film while trying to hold it dead steady as possible. Try that. And then consider that most encounters are over in about four to 10 seconds. That's gonna mean that you shoot about two to three seconds of shaky, blurry footage at best. But the real question here for me is, was there something about what Patterson and Gimlin did that gave them an edge over everyone since? Or was it just blind luck? And there is one thing for sure that separates Patterson and Gimlin from most all field researchers now, and that is the fact that they were on horseback. But would that really matter? And I can tell you, I grew up riding horses. I know there were times when I was able to get closer to game or, or even just cattle because I was on horseback. So why would that be? Well, for one, horses aren't threatening to most animals. They're, they're not predators, they're prey. So that right there could be one edge. Another thing, nothing out there smells quite like us humans. You know, when was the last time you were in a crowded elevator? We smell with all of our defunkifying body and hair products and mouthwashes and toothpaste and colognes and aftershaves and cigars or cigs or whatever else. So I would guess that anything out there that makes its living and survives day in and day out by its nose knows when a human is on the scene and where that human is and can then avoid us or not. And why, you ask, would anything avoid us? Well, because humans can and do blow away everything, anything that moves. So my point here is horses have a strong scent as well. So their scent might help mask ours. So if Patty the Bigfoot, let's say, didn't hear Patterson and Gimling coming up on her. And she also didn't smell them. Well, that is an insane advantage. Th that's almost like they were invisible to her because sometimes up in heavy brush or up in the trees, something might be 20 yards away from you and you still might not be able to see it. And then combine that with the fact that horses cover ground far faster and easier than we do. So by just simply being horseback, Patterson and Gimlin, they could have ridden up on Patty before she even knew what was going on. So again, another huge advantage, three of them. Can't smell them, can't hear them, and they're moving fast, or faster than humans normally would. And so now, for some just pure speculation, any intelligent species, they're gonna know their surroundings. They're gonna know who their neighbors are. And if all of a sudden, one day some horses showed up there at Bluff Creek at an altitude where horses generally never were, Patty the Bigfoot might have been mildly curious she might have possibly walked out to see what the heck was going on. And then boom, surprise, there were men on the horses. Now, I, I bet if horses were riding down your block, you would step outside to take a look at them too, if you're the curious type. So bottom line, being on horseback did work once, or was at least part of the equation. So now, out of the hundreds of millions of us with cameras on us right now, and if now we're daylight, how many of those hundreds of millions would you guess are on horseback? Up in the mountains, in a forested area, known to be a Bigfoot hotspot, riding with a friend, and not just trail riding or sightseeing, I'm talking about hunting with cameras, with your eyes peeled, ready to be filming within seconds. I would guess that now we've gone from say hundreds of millions down to zero as in there are zero people out there right now using the Patterson-Gimlin method. Because now, you know, we're all about high tech. 
We think we can outsmart and outgadget anything on the planet. So take trail cams, for example. Yeah, they're slick enough, they're cool gadgets, but those things surely reek of unnatural smells and little sounds and whirs, plus mix in the smells of the human that installed the thing, along with they have infrared lights on them that for all we know might beam like neon signs to anything that can see infrared. And so at that point, even a mildly intelligent species would know to stay away or at least be cautious. I mean, if, if suddenly there was some strange device in your front yard, you would at least be leery. And then we've got drones and blimps proposed and, and even satellites, but none of those things can see under tree canopies or in the dark, you know, so there goes that, unless it's just perfect conditions and something happens, just happens to be strolling along out in the open. And, and even then, we're only gonna get a bird's eye view. That's not gonna mean much to most. Not that all those things aren't fine ideas, but are they working? Have any of them ever provided us any footage on par with the Patterson-Gimlin film? And of course, the answer is no. Now, there is one other low-tech method that a lot seem to prefer, seem to be very popular, and that's walking around screaming, hitting trees with sticks. But I bet the Patterson-Gimlin method would work even better than that. What do you think? It's your time to weigh in. Do you think being horseback would give field investigators now a huge advantage over most any other method? And was it the edge for Patterson and Gimlin? So there you go, guys. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, if you like me making these videos, please subscribe, comment, like if you like, and share my videos with your friends. All of those things help provide me with more time. And for all y'all who are kind and generous enough to click on that little support finger thunder tab up there, thank you so much. It means the world to me. Take care, everybody.